Welcome. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at this Wavelink USB-C 4K triple display 10 gig docking station. So this was provided to me by the distributor, but they're not compensating me for this video and they're not reviewing it before I post it. If you find this video helpful and you want to purchase one of these, I'll put a link to it in the description. And if you use that link, it helps me out a little bit and doesn't cost anything extra. So lots to cover on this one. So in the corner here, it says 12 in one multifunction dock. Press and pop up, install SSD easily. Enough power for full loading. So we have the features listed on the bottom here. It's an M.2 SSD enclosure, has two HDMI outputs, 4K at 60 Hz, one display port, 4K at 60 Hz, 100 watts power delivery, one USB-C 10 gigabit per second port, and one USB-A 10 gigabit per second port. And then two USB-A 5 gigabit per second ports, has SD and micro SD ports at 104 megabytes per second, has gigabit ethernet, and 3.5 millimeter audio in and out. So we have a lot of the same listed on the back. It says it's for Windows 10, 11, Mac OS 11 or later. We have some CPU requirements here. It says the laptop PC should have one Thunderbolt 3, 4 port or fully functional USB-C port with video alt mode and data transfer. To use power delivery, it requires a laptop to support PD 3.0. This talks about the SSD enclosure. It supports NVMe SSD, SATA SSD, but not mSATA. So let's get this open. So here we have the docking station. It says press to open the top lid of the deck, insert your SSD into the slot, reassemble the cover. Okay, so we will take a look at that in a second. Here we have a manual. This is a USB type C cable. This is a thermal pad. It's the power supply. This is 20 volts at two amps for 40 watts. So let's look at the quick guide. So this shows all the ports here. Talks about SSD installation. This goes over how to format the drive. This talks about connecting monitors. So something to keep in mind, the device you plug into has to support multiple monitors. And this talks about arranging the displays on Windows and on Mac. And we have some FAQs here. So let's look at this. We have a power button, looks like a reset switch, our USB-C 10 gigabit, USB-A 10 gigabit. We have the SD micro SD audio, Kensington lock. We have ethernet. These are our slower USB ports. So if you had keyboard and mouse, you might want to plug in those or printers, scanners and such you'd typically want to put your storage in the faster ones. And then we have the display, the two HDMI and the display port and the power in. And then if we go to the bottom here, we have a vent and some rubberized feet. On the side, we have power delivery in and then host. That's what we'll connect our USB to. So let's get the SSD installed in this so we can take the lid off. And this is where it will install. So I have this Crucial P5 Plus, one terabyte NVMe SSD. I'm going to place that in here making sure it's keyed right. So that little slot is on the right side in the orientation I'm holding it right now. So I'll stick that in there. And then we have that thermal pad. Let me get that out. So this has plastic on both sides. Peel that off. Now that's not super sticky. It has a little bit of tack to it. Let's put the drive down first. So it has this little rubber plug. I'm going to place that in the notch of the MVME drive. And then I will press that in like so. So that will hold it in and then we'll put the thermal pad on top of that. So that will go essentially where the sticker is. So that will transfer heat from the drive to the lid. And the lid is kind of thick here to act as a heat sink. So I'll peel the plastic off this top layer if I can. There we go. Now I can reinsert this like so. So the USB-C cable that came with this is around 40 inches or one meter. So I want to try this out on a couple different devices. First, we'll connect it up to the iPad Pro. So I have my iPad 4, it's a 2024 model with the M4 processor. I'll plug power in to the docking station. Now normally I would put the docking station off to the side, I might keep it out front here to show things. So I'll plug into the host with the USB-C cable and you want to make sure it's all the way in and seated. And then this will plug into the iPad, like so. I'll power this on. So I have a little note here showing it's connected, it says unlock iPad to use accessories. So right off the bat, we have an SSD installed in this so I can go to files and the SSD is called USB drive. So I have a video on there, I can play the video. This is a 4K video. Let's see if we can scrub through this easily. Okay, so you can see that scrubs through there nice. Let's play here. And we have smooth video playback. So since we have the high speed interface and the fast SSD, we're going to have good performance there. So this is running at USB-C speeds. This isn't the fastest you can get out of an SSD like that, but it is very fast and would work well for even things like video editing. Next, let's plug in an ethernet cable. So when we think of an iPad, we typically think of wireless, but it will support ethernet. So I'll go to my network settings. 
on the left side here, Ethernet has shown up. So it says we're connected to Gigabit Ethernet. So let me open up a web browser. And here I have a speed test. This is on my local network. So this is testing the LAN speed. So we'll hit start here. So we got around 975 down and 950 up. And that is typical of Gigabit Ethernet. When you're doing a test like this, you won't see 1000. It will be a little bit slower due to overhead and such. But that's showing it's working correctly. So you could have very fast Wi-Fi, but connecting it up to Ethernet when you have it docked is going to take congestion off your Wi-Fi network. So this also supports SD cards. So we have a micro SD card. This will support either one. So it looks like I probably want to put this in with the label down. I'll go back into files and here we have photos. So I can open that up. So I could transfer them to or from my iPad. I could probably transfer this also to the internal storage. Let's try that. So if I hold my finger down on it, a contextual menu will come up and I'll hit copy. I'll go to my USB drive. I'll hold down here and say paste. So now we've copied between the two. Let's copy a larger file. Let's copy the 4K video. Now we're copying from the really fast internal storage to that micro SD card, which is not going to be as fast, but it should transfer pretty quickly. So we pasted that in and we have status up here at the top. And that's transferring fairly quickly. That's probably not easy to see, but there we go. So another thing we can do is plug in a USB keyboard dongle. So I'll plug that in the slower USB in the back. And I say slower, five gigabit per second, still decent, but it's not as fast as the front. So now we can use the mouse and the keyboard. It even supports things like application switching. So here we have a USB 3.0 flash drive. Let's plug that in the front. And that showed up on the left here. It says media. I'll open it up. Here we have a lot of files, so I'll hit select. I'll say select all. On the bottom here, it says more, I'll click more, and I'll say copy. And then let's go to the internal drive, which is called USB drive. And I'll right click here and I'll say new folder. I'll name that USB three drive. I'll open it up and we'll paste in here. So this has quite a few items on it. So it may take a second. Okay, so it has 1.6 gig. So it's going to take about two minutes. 21 seconds, although it looks like it's happening quite a bit faster than that. Okay, so that copied. Now I want to point out this is not charging the iPad right now, but this does support PD input. So I'll use this 100 watt PD charger, or it's 105 watt, I think. I'll plug this in and I'll plug that into the side of the hub. So now that's going to pass through charging to the iPad. Okay, so I'm repositioning here. So let's plug in a monitor. So I plugged in an HDMI monitor to HDMI. And as far as I know, this only supports one monitor, but we'll try this out. I'll hit continue here. And here we have a second monitor. So let's go into our display settings, go to arrangement, and I have it above my iPad. I can also mirror the display. So it looks like if I want to move something from the display here, I can click the three dots on the top and say move to display, and I can get some other software up and have it on this display. So let's move this to the top display. And with Stage Manager, it looks like when you click on it, it comes to front and center, and then whatever you had front and center goes to the left. Let's pull something else up here. Okay, so I opened up numbers. Now we can click between numbers, settings, and pages. Then if we move our mouse down, we can come to the main iPad display. Let's try connecting a second monitor just to see what happens. Okay, so it did bring up two displays and it's mirroring those displays there. So with the iPad Pro with the M4 processor, it looks like you can put multiple displays on it, but it's going to mirror the external displays. So that could be useful. For instance, if you're doing a demonstration, you might have one output going to a projector. The other one might be a monitor that you look at, and then the third will be your iPad itself. So you could have some notes on here for your presentation, and you could have your presentation displaying on the external monitors. So this being a docking station, so long as we're not transferring information, we can just unplug this, and then we can take this with us. So we could have this set up at our home office or maybe at the office and we could plug into this and it will connect up all of the drives 
and the monitors and everything and get it set up and ready to go. So next I'm going to set this up with my PC so we can test out running three displays with this. Okay, so here I have my Peladin W004 mini PC, and this was given to me by Peladin for a previous video, but they have no association with this video. So this has a USB-C interface on it. So this monitor here is connected to the HDMI of the docking station, and it's sending it through the USB-C, and then this is plugged into the HDMI on the device itself. So I tried to plug both monitors into this hub, and it wouldn't work with that, and that's because this PC does not support that. So I'm running one monitor through here, and the other one through the PC itself. So here we can see we can extend the displays. And this PC supports three monitors just in and of itself, but one of those would have to be plugged into the USB-C port. And if you do that, you lose usage of that port. So using a hub like this allows you to expand it. So this is sending through display, but we can also go and access all of our media drives on here. So this is the USB drive, this is the SD card and the internal storage. I know it's hard to see that, but I'm just showing that those did mount up automatically. So a docking station like this is great for portable devices, but you can also use it as a hub for things like PCs and desktops. So that's the Wavelength USB-C 4K triple display docking station. This thing is just chock full of features, it has a place to install an NVMe SSD, and you can do it without any tools. So that turns this into an external storage enclosure, but that's the only beginning of this. Then you have all the different expansion ports around here to hook up displays and such. Oftentimes modern computers only come with USB-C, so it may not have a place to plug in things like USB-A devices or SD cards, monitors, and networking. So with this, it has you covered. So a docking station like this would go great with iPads, MacBooks, Chromebooks, Surface. So previously with laptops, you might have a huge docking station, but now with this, you just plug in that single USB cable and it connects everything up at once. So when you get to your office, you, once you plug this in, it will automatically connect to your monitors, networks, keyboards, and such. Now, many systems, you don't even have to open up the device to have this work. You can run it in what's called clamshell mode. So you can leave your laptop closed while plugging this in. You want to make sure your device supports that if you're going to use that. So even if your laptop has some or all of the features of this docking station, it can be more convenient to just plug in the one cord. So if you had ethernet or USB-A ports on it, it's easier just to plug in the one device to do charging and everything else than to plug in the separate devices. For instance, a printer. To plug in your printer every time would be a pain when you could just run it off one cord. So that's all I'm going to cover in this video. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comments. If you like this video, please click like. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate if you could do that. And thanks for watching. Until next time, goodbye.